and I welcome our YouTube family who are joining us now for, for the video and we pray to come under God's blessing, God's anointing. And the place where Jesus desires to be born this Christmas is in my heart and in your heart. Well, indeed, he, he desires that he's already born in our hearts, that he's already living in our hearts. How many of you can honestly say that you have invited Jesus to live within your heart? Could have a show of hands on that? Praise God. But uh, just in case that there's one or two may not have, or people watching us on video may not understand about Jesus living in our hearts, if you have already invited Jesus to come live within your heart, there's no need to invite him again. However, in order that everybody can join in the, the prayer, we'll, we'll say the prayer together. So even if you have already Jesus living in your heart, I'll invite you to join with those who are joining us in the YouTube video and uh, anybody who hasn't previously invited Jesus to live within their hearts. Lord Jesus, I'm truly sorry for my sins. I repent of all sin and desire to for you to come live within me. Lord Jesus, come live within me and make your home within me for the rest of my life. Thank you, Jesus, that you have heard my prayer. And that you, the Lord God of creation, are now living within me. Isn't that awesome? We actually have Jesus living within us. If you said that prayer sincerely, even if you never before heard about having Jesus come and live within you, he has come. You can trust that now you have Jesus living within you. And that if you walk in his ways, that his presence within you will grow and will grow and will grow. Until you reach the stage where not just is Jesus living in you, but you are actually living in Jesus. In other words, his light and his love will be able to extend into the fullness of your mind and heart. And isn't that something wonderful? And we pray as we prepare for Christmas, that should be our desire. To really come to have Jesus alive in our hearts. Now, if there's somebody again who is not familiar with this understanding, I refer you in particular to my little booklet, The Young Person's Spirit-Powered Life. And as it says in the back, it's suitable for those aged 7 to 107. But the more adult version is the Spirit-Powered Life. But it's focused on helping people to really open their hearts to Jesus, to have him come alive in their hearts, to walk in his ways. But as we prepare for Christmas also, it hasn't been an easy year, has it? There have been a lot of disappointments during the year. And people worried and missing out and loss, and in some cases, bereavement. Yes, in some cases, bereavement and our hearts go out to those who have been bereaved during the year, whether it was as a result of COVID-19 or whether it was for some other reason, because they weren't able to have even the normal funeral. And so we bring whatever is lost, whatever loss you have suffered during the past year, I invite you now, bring it to the Lord. Jesus says, Come to me, all you who labour and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Now, how do we come to Jesus with our burdens? The first way to come to Jesus with our burdens is by crying them out to Jesus. Sometimes within our Catholic tradition, 
people have thought that instead of bringing their burdens to Jesus and crying them out to Jesus, that are to leave them behind when they turn for prayer. And that's part of the difficulties where people only recite prayers. Cry your suffering out to Jesus. Cry whatever is lost in your life out to Jesus. Cry whatever has gone wrong for you during the past year out to, uh, out to Jesus. And seek to bring it to him and to surrender to him. Hear Jesus saying to you personally, come to me with this burden. Come to me with this loss. And I will give you strength. Or as the second reading today said. Glory to him. Who is able to give you the strength to live according to his word. Or according to the good news that I have preached. Glory to him who is able to give you the strength. To deal with whatever losses you have suffered during the year. And did Jesus ever promised us an easy life? Did the apostles ever promise us an easy life? St. James said, Consider it pure joy, dear friends, when you encounter trials of many kinds, because you know that, it is that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Allow perseverance to finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete not lacking anything. And was St. James alone in saying that? St. Paul said much the same thing. He, he said, we rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance character and character hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts through the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. There was a survey taken up recently in America and there was one interesting detail that emerged from the survey. Regular churchgoers feel that they came out of the past year better than they began it. Isn't that nice? The regular churchgoers, I don't know whether they were able to go to church all the time during the year or not and I don't know whether that was covered in the survey or not. But they, they indicated that they had come out of the year better than they started it. And that's what walking with Jesus does. We have suffered losses. But if we have borne these losses in union with Jesus, then we're stronger. We are stronger and better able to deal with further problems as they come away. And so I pray for every person who is watching this video. The grace right now. Bring it all to Jesus. Surrender it to Jesus. Whatever was lost in your life during the past year. Surrender it to Jesus. Bring it to Jesus. And as we think about loss and suffering. I invite you to, to meditate for a moment on the nativity scene. On our Blessed Mother and Saint Joseph and baby Jesus being born in a stable. Did they have it all their own way? They certainly didn't, did they? Mary having to give birth in a stable. That was loss. That was loss. That was deprivation. And then no sooner had they given birth to Jesus, well, perhaps no sooner is not the right word because it was probably close to two years afterwards, after giving birth to Jesus, what happened? The wise men arrived on the scene and what had to do then? Take off for Egypt. Go into exile. Whatever loss we have suffered during the year, it's been primarily, well, for many of us it was just material loss. For those who have suffered bereavement during the year, it was more than material loss, of course. But whatever it is, I pray for you right now, as you think about our Blessed Mother, 
And you think about St. Joseph as you think about Jesus born in the stable. Right now, bring it to Jesus. Bring it. I am praying for you the grace to right now bring whatever you suffered during the past year to Jesus. To surrender it to Jesus. God never promised us an easy life. But he did promise us that when we walk with him, he will walk with us. So the prophet Isaiah do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they won't sweep you away. When you walk through fire, you won't be scorched. And the flame will not burden you up. Isaiah 43, um, verses 1 to 2. And one thing I encourage people to do, it's one thing I do myself. When a scripture verse really speaks into my situation, I write it out and I post it up where I'll be looking at it regularly. Some verses I post on the bottom of my computer that I'll be working on each day. Else, I can, might post them elsewhere in my prayer books or whatever. Let the scripture verses like that speak to you. When you pass through the waters, God says, I will be with you. He didn't say that there wouldn't be waters. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they won't sweep you away. When you walk through fire, you won't be scorched. And the flame will not burden you up. Make that promise your own. Whatever you are facing now, whatever you are facing for the coming year, I encourage you to make that promise your own and to trust Jesus that he will give you the strength and that every time that Jesus gives you strength to face a difficulty, that his love will be poured out more fully in your heart, that you will become more open to him, that his blessing will penetrate more deeply into your mind and heart. So glimpse Jesus going before you. Glimpse Jesus giving you the strength for everything you need to do. And he will do so. Also, as we prepare for Christmas, the one thing I encourage you is make it a safe Christmas. Make it a safe Christmas in so far as you possibly can. None of us have a guarantee. With this COVID-19, there are no guarantees. But we Christians should give good example. We Christians should make every effort to protect ourselves, but above all to protect our families and to protect vulnerable people. I was most disappointed there recently watching a particular Christian YouTuber. He was proudly boasting he was going to have a big party for Thanksgiving. Outrageous. And across America there has been a spike in COVID-19 and a spike in deaths as a result of people having big parties for Thanksgiving. And even if, it, even if there was nobody in his home, own home that was affected by it, how many were influenced? He's a, he's a very popular YouTuber, hundreds of thousands of, of viewers very often. How many people were motivated by him to act in an irresponsible way? And do you know what? Before God, he is complicit in every debt that took place in America as a result of people behaving irresponsibly over Thanksgiving. In every debt. Not just in the debts that directly resulted, but in every debt. But we Christians, we are called to give good example. And so I encourage you now to think about the plan for Christmas, to plan how you will visit your relatives at Christmas, 
to reach out to people who may need reaching out to at Christmas, who may be feeling lonely at Christmas, but to do so in a safe manner. And here, of course, um, on when next Wednesday we'll have a vigil mass for Christmas, which I will be offering for the intentions of our YouTube family. And then the St. Stephen's Day Mass we will be offering for the intentions of the God's Cottage family. And then after the Sunday Mass I'll be talking about the vaccines. But I'm going to expose the Blessed Sacrament now so there'll be a couple of moments of an interlude. I'll expose the Blessed Sacrament and then there'll be an opportunity for people to receive a blessing with the Blessed Sacrament. Lord Jesus, we adore you truly present before us. Lord Jesus, we do love you and desire to love you with all our mind, with all our heart, with all our soul and with all our strength. And we pray, Lord Jesus, as we prepare for Christmas, we pray for our families. Lord, this year, when they can't celebrate Christmas the way they normally do, grant, Lord, it may be an opportunity for them to focus on you, to open their hearts to you. And for ourselves, Lord, the gap that will be left in the way we celebrate Christmas Lord, we desire that you will fill that gap. And we desire to give you the opportunity to fill that gap. And we desire, Lord, that as a result of the way we celebrate Christmas, we pray, Lord, that we will be more open to your presence within us, more open to trusting you, more open to walking in your ways. And for our families, protect them, Lord. Protect us all, Lord, from this COVID-19. I said in a video back last March that this problem with COVID-19 would not be solved without your help. And I still believe that to be true, even with the vaccines. As we hear of new variants of the COVID, Lord, we entrust this situation to you. And we pray, Lord, for a real solution to COVID-19. We pray, Lord, for all who are working to provide a solution to COVID-19. And we pray, Lord, that in our decisions over Christmas, that we will be careful, be wise, that we will be willing to let go of little things in order to experience the big thing and in order to make this a safe Christmas for ourselves and for our families. And we pray, Lord Jesus, for your blessing to go right to us for your blessing Lord Jesus to go right through us for your blessing Lord to go right through us and to protect us Lord Jesus we adore you we adore you, truly present before us. Let your blessing go right through us. Let your protection surround us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much, everybody. God bless you.